guys hear me? I, I feel like I should put my... Uh, Hi, I gotta get used to looking over here instead of at the screen because that's where I'm usually looking at uh, for a lot of my like control Hi, stuff like OBS is over there and everything. Uh, hello, this is uh, a different screen than I'm used to doing. Actually, I'm, I'm so used to having my headphones on. When I stream, maybe I'll put them on just to feel more comfortable. Hello. This is, oh, oh no, wait. I'm glad I did that because I didn't realize my sound was on, so it was like echoing. <laughs> um, yeah, maybe actually, maybe I'll do that. Um, yeah, hi guys. I don't know how many people are here, but if you are here and you can in the chat, say what's up. Uh, I am, like I said, doing a, uh, a completely different stream than I, I normally do. Like, I've done... You know, the, I've done the Pokemon Let's Play, I've done the art stream, I did the writing stream, where it was like my video, um, where you could see me on video, but this is the first time I'm doing something where it's like, I'm just, I'm just opening a box, <laughs> so I don't know how long this is going to last, but, um, hopefully we get a lot of good stuff out of it, because I'm very excited, I should not hold my scissors like that, um, <laughs> I'm very excited, I've been waiting, I, I completed this project, I want to say I completed this project on my birthday, so April 26th is my birthday, hi Rihanna, hi uh, Latreo, hi Bella, um, I completed this project, thank you guys for coming out by the way, I completed this project on my birthday, which is also Leftovers' sixth anniversary, and I, um, I, I, it was important for me to finish it by then because even though this project doesn't span the entire six years, it only spans four of them, um, it was still like a celebratory thing, celebratory reflect, uh, reflection thing. Uh, Rihanna, the echo might be, the echo might actually go away in a little bit because I, I left my audio on <laughs> um and if that's the case then it'll be like really late for you hearing this I'm sorry but um but yeah so I guess uh I don't want to reveal it before I before I open the box let me just go ahead and get into this so let me see I the company that I used to actually can you see this yes you can cool the company that I used to do this project um, and I won't mention them by name until I open it up because I'll give it away. I've never used them before, so I'm hoping that I can give them a glowing recommendation after this because, um, I mean, just from my experience, it was pretty easy. There was a, a moment where it was like, it says on their website that it's, it's four to six days, um, four to six days production time, and I, I sent them in on the 20. 6th or 27th, I can't remember, of April, and then I, um, I, I got a message back, and it was, like, May 5th is when I officially, they were, like, hi, Carrie, <laughs> um, thank you, uh, May 5th is when I officially got the notice back, where they were, like, all right, can you fix these, like, small little things, and then we can send it off to production, I did all that, May 5th is when they officially went into production, so, <laughs> the echo's gone now, so, um, I was expecting them to, to like give me a heads up. They're like, oh, they're gonna be done. Um, they're gonna be done on the 11th, uh, or the, you know, by the 11th, I was expecting them to be like, yo, they're done. But nobody sent me anything, um, because it's you know six days turnaround time from the fifth. So I like messaged them, and they were like, sorry, we'll check to see like what the production is, because even though it was six days from the fifth on the 11th, the portal said it'll be delivered. The estimated delivery was May uh, 17th, which was yesterday. So I was like, hey, you know, like no rush or anything. I just want to know where they are in production. And this was, I want to say I sent this out on Saturday. And she was like, hey, don't worry, I'll, I'll look into it. And then <laughs> they literally were like, oh, on Sunday, I think they were like, oh, it's, uh, it's done. Uh, it's going to be, you know, it's going to be shipped out. Um, and then Sunday, I think, is when it was shipped out. So it came today. So it was like, considering they just got them done Saturday, and then it came today, I was like, wow, you guys actually still managed to make <laughs> the delivery estimate? Like, essentially. It was a day off, but it, it's not that big of a deal. Um, but yeah, I really hope. I really hope. Oh, I can see them a little. <laughs> oh my god. Oh my god! 
Okay. All right. <laughs> Oh, they look so good. I, I'm sorry. I'm going to pull them out. I'm going to pull them out. Whoa. Whoa. Okay. Here it is. Um, This is what I've been working on or what I, I was working on for, oh my God, for Leftovers' um, sixth anniversary. It was a art book. Um, that is, it's, it's called Four Years in Island Girl. That's what I was talking about. It doesn't span the whole six years. It only spans the, um, a f period of four years. But it's essentially, it is, um, it is a reflective art book on the Duford Saga. And anybody who's read my comic knows what, like, the Duford Saga is. It's, um, chapter six to chapter 12 is the Duford Saga. Um, oh my god, I cannot believe this is real. <laughs> I... I've never made a book like this before. Um, I, I, I've helped work on something that is in progress, but um, it, it the sizing wasn't proper on it, so that's still going on. Like we're still working on that. But as far as like an actual, it, like this is a hardcover book. This is like I don't know if you can hear me, but this is a hardcover book. It's 160 pages. Um, and the reason why I was saying that is because like the the back text is super huge and I you know I never never worked on it <laughs> never worked on a book like this so I wasn't sure how to size everything next time I'll know that like it doesn't have to be this big but maybe it looks good like this um who knows the um yeah so this this book is finally in my hands and I think hmm no, I like the matte. So I, I got the cover. I didn't get the cover um, glossy. I got the cover matte. And I'm trying to figure out if I prefer it matte or if I would would have preferred it glossy. Either way, I'm like, I'm really excited about it. <laughs> and I, like, I want to get into it. But I, I also know that I'm going to um, definitely take some time tonight to to look into them. There's, there's 13 books in here. Um... And they're all like they're all accounted for at the moment. I wanted to do this initial print run first, uh, just to figure out things and and figure out you know, because I I it was only me working on this. Like I didn't have any editors or anything, so I just want to you know go through. I went through and I proofread. So because like with a comic, you can there's certain mistakes that you make sometimes, like spelling errors and stuff. Um, hi Kaylee. Um, there's certain things that you may um, make, like spelling errors and stuff, that you can go back in and fix later on. But with a book, uh, it's, you can't really do that. Um, and you could do it if you do like another print run, but I wanted to make sure this was as good as, as possible. And I want to make sure there's no like printing errors in here. So this first print run, I got a lot of copies because they're cheaper individually. Um, they're cheaper individually. Thank you guys in the chat. Like all the way, I see. Uh, by the way, I see you guys like freaking out just like I am. Um, they're cheaper by it's cheaper by the individual if you get a bulk. So oh, I can you, the website that I was using is a website called Mixum, and I um I'm like I'm happy with the way this looks right now. I got to look inside of it, and I will do that on stream. But um, I will definitely tell you guys, you know, whether or not I recommend them. Um, but but. Yeah, I forgot exactly where it was at. <laughs> I forgot where it was at. But um, I'm gonna... <laughs> oh my god. I'm sorry. I, I just opened it up and it's like... The colors. Okay. Alright. Let's... Let's... Let's look into this. Let's, let's do... Uh... Oh no, this one's torn. Okay, so this is gonna be the this is probably gonna be my copy. I gotta check the rest of them too, but like this page here, I don't know if you can see it a little bit, but it's torn. Um which is fine. This paper is also very, very not as thin. It's not super duper thin, but next time I think I'm gonna get a, a thicker a thicker page um grade. I got eighty pound, I think, is the, the page that I got. Um but but yeah, so this is some of the printing is a little throwed off on that, but this is the front page. Um, this is the title page, and it is um, 
I don't have I really explained I guess what the book is about yet let me let me let me do this is the page that I freaked out on this is the the table of contents section and it I don't know if you can see over the camera but in person the colors look so good and like what more can you ask for when you're doing you know an art book um because that's what this is like I said I haven't really explained all of it but so you see here there's there's chapter sections and then there's reflection se uh, reflection sections and it, this book is is basically it is an art book covering um the Duford art chapters 6 through 12 and if any of you have seen my um pdfs that I put up the behind the scenes books that is essentially this but this is like a special edition of that um and I do plan to I do plan to put this up um I want to have a digital version and then I want to have a version that you like where you can order um you can order a hard copy too and I'm, I'm thinking about pricing that at like 25 dollars because that's how much these cost individually to get produced and it's it's weird because like I've, I'm kind of iffy about like pricing leftover things, but it, it's also I do need to get the money for production if I'm going to send these out. Um, and then digital, I would probably price them at like 15 so that way I can hopefully like recoup some of the shipping costs. Um, because it would just like the 25 for the hardcover would just be production, it wouldn't be shipping. Um, for me sending it out to people. But, but yeah, <laughs> I'm like getting hot talking about this. Um, let me see. Let me see. Oh, man. I did not realize how big this text is. I was so afraid that this was going to be, like, really hard to read. But it's not. <laughs> Especially, like, the caption text. Oh, my God. I'm seeing it in person now. And it's... Oh, man. Man. Like, okay, this was the, um, I hit myself on the face there. This was the first time I used InDesign to, like, put together a whole project. Usually when I made my PDFs, I would do, um, I would use Illustrator. And Illustrator, you just, you set it up with your artboards and stuff and you, you know, do all that. And each one is very much an individual thing. But you can really bulk process some stuff in InDesign. And it, I didn't expect for it to be... I didn't expect for it to be like an easy or a um a pro a process that I would come to love but I actually being in the trenches with this <laughs> being in the trenches with this art book for you know a couple weeks I have come to love in design <laughs> especially like their their justification feature um justification is is like when you can you can have like a block of text and it like evenly spreads out the words or it spaces it out so the edges are even on the sides dude <laughs> InDesign's justification feature is, mwah, it's so good. Illustrator has one too, but it is janky sometimes. There might be settings I need to play around with, but like fresh, fresh justification to InDesign is, is much more, um, is, is better than Illustrator for, by far. Um, but yeah, so I still have not explained what this book is about, have I? Um... Essentially, it is a con it is a concept art book. It is um, uh, it it there's different sections in each chapter. So let me see. So okay, you got your chapter sections and you have your reflection sections. Each chapter is broken down into um, the, the like there's a little page where it's like actually it's probably better if I just go through and show you like the first chapter. Um, but the the main idea behind this book was to have something to document the uh not only the process behind these chapters but also just the things in life that that went on um it's it's very much like an autobiography but in art book form if that makes sense and that's what the reflection sections are because when i was when i was like okay maybe i should just combine six chapters into one art book this time since it's you know i'm going into making leftovers based on arcs and that wasn't even really a thing in the Dufort arc it just started in the slateport arc but i was like oh yeah i could probably you know combine all the Dufort chapters together and, and then some there's a few other chapters that aren't based in Dufort, but I could probably combine all of them together to, you know, make an arc and just put them all in one sketchbook. And I was like, okay, but how am I going to put everything 
in here because not only is it um not only you know are there concept sketches and art and stuff behind the scenes with with each chapter there's also a lot of like stories and stuff there's a lot of you know life things that happen behind the scenes that are, is important i think to to keep um keep track of to keep record of so i was like how do i do this and i actually i was studying some art books before i started working on this one i studied um let me see i got them here I studied Zootopia, which is surprisingly a hot mess. <laughs> um, I love it though. I love I love the the art book and how much they show in here. But like the way it's organized is surprisingly a hot mess. Um, and I think that's part of it because that that is just the way the aesthetic of Zootopia, where there's like a lot of stuff going on. There's a lot of animal prints, stuff like that. Um, but the one that really, really came in handy was my Avatar book. Um, and namely because they have these sections, um, let me see if I can, I still got my pencil in here. Uh, let me see. It'd be better if I just went to the table of contents, but I'm not that person. <laughs> here we go. So they have these sections called spotlights, if you can see where it's just stuff that is either all-encompassing throughout the series and doesn't fit into any one specific book, or it's um, just little things that they want to talk about, like specific artists' uh, work or the calligraphy, which is that section, or like the hybrid animals and stuff like that. And I was like, oh, that's really cool. Like, after each book, they have a spotlight. So I made it so that after each chapter, I have a reflection section, which is, that goes into the different stories and stuff um, present in uh through each arc so like you know after granite grapple you got it's the red eyes for me that that is a story that uh surrounds um that happened around you know the development of chapter six and then you know go so on and so forth so let me show you how man it is like surreal seeing this in person <laughs> um this is the intro section oh okay so this is how each chapter this is how each chapter is set up and each chapter has a <laughs> it's just so nice seeing it in person man this is crazy <laughs> and I'm, I'm just so glad that the text is not because i the way i had to proof this you know obviously i'm not going to print every page out it's 160 pages but the way i had to to proof this is through a pdf and i you know i had to zoom in and stuff to see it so i was like it's gonna be too small like I looked up the correct sizes for um because the only books that I set up to this point are um the pdfs of the behind the scenes uh the behind the scenes pdfs which are kind of like renegade doing their own thing and then there's another book that I'm working on that the, the, the only portion I really like set up was the illustrations. So having to actually set up blocks of text and knowing the correct font size for like published books and stuff, I looked up some stuff. Um, I had to look up a lot of stuff to, to really get that right. Um, I love, cause I almost chose glossy for these pages. The satin is perfect. The satin is perfect. Like I said, um, uh, uh, thicker pages would be better and I'm gonna do that for the next print run. Um, but I'm planning on putting these up for sale, like pre-order, um, in, um, June, when Leftovers comes back from the, like, small hiatus that we're on right now. I'm planning on putting these up in June. Um, also, Kaylee, this is a Mudkip. This is Sammy. My, uh, I don't know if you've read Leftovers or not. Pro well, probably not, since you asked. But, like, no, that's, that's Sammy, my Mudkip. Um, <laughs> and he is, there is a lot of reasons why he's sad, but... This chapter is this chapter is a lot. <laughs> oh, I don't want to spoil it, but but yeah. So each chapter starts with the title page, um, and you've got like the name of the chapter, and then there's a little spiel. And the sp uh, the spiel is specifically it's it's broken down into this is a summary of the chapter, like a very small summary, and then this is where I was in life at the time. And um, I don't know if you can read it on here, but yeah that's how it's broken down this is where i was in life at the time and then this is like the synopsis of what the chapter was and then you go into let's see the next section is the development section and i i have to this is where i um start 
this is where I say that I'm very proud of how I put this book together because like this is the cleanest <laughs> this is the cleanest that my like art graphic design has gotten to this point so and it's just like grids like that's the crazy thing is that it's, it's literally just grids um in my other pdfs and stuff I'm like clipping things into things and it twerk like rotating pictures and stuff like that and it's like no like you can have a nice setup with just grids and I used the same grid layout for like I use the same section layout for every chapter but obviously there's different things in there um so yeah the next section is development and this page will almost always be like um photos that I used for reference while I was working on it and then it, it's a whole section about um just like early development stuff before I got into the chapter um let me see The development section in this chapter is not like super long so stuff like like this too and that is chapter six i'm just going to show you guys chapter six um there's so much more in this book that i'm not worried about you know spoiling it but yeah so that is that's the entirety of the development section for chapter six as it goes on they get longer because i get more and more into um making like lineups and and color references and all this other stuff down the line but let me see man i'm so glad this text is not like itty bitty baby oh okay hold on while i'm here another cool thing that i learned is that indesign has i don't know if you can see it indesign has an automatic um uh, page numbering system and I was like how am I gonna go back like I got to the end of the book I, I finished everything and I was like I'm done and then I realized oh, I have a table of contents and they're not labeled so I went back in and I was like how am I gonna do this and I researched and it was like oh yeah you can just uh, um, apply a page numbering to master and then it'll like go down the line so I, I did that and it, I styled them and everything and it was like, it was catharsis because it's, oh, it's a real book now, you know what I mean? It has page numbers. <laughs> um, Alright, so next section, uh, so after development, there's always the process section. And it looks so good on camera, like, oh, uh, you would have you thought I put together a real book. Um, <laughs> there's a process section and it, it's, I just take a page from whatever the chapter was and then break down how um how it was made how the style of the chapter is made because each um if you don't know each chapter of leftovers especially up to this point has a specific style um and that's very intentional it's it's supposed to be leftovers is an improvement project um and it's it's very much a vehicle for me to like try new things which is also why it's so important for me to self-reflect i mean they, they kind of go hand in hand it's not like that happened and then that's like i i started learning how to self-reflect after that it's they go hand in hand but um but yeah so you have the process here of like chapter six is coloring style essentially um it's thumbnails the line art then you have like the the regular flat colors and then the shading and stuff like that and i tried to include like i obviously didn't have a whole lot of space here um but i tried to include certain um little fun facts i guess as far as uh process and stuff goes like for instance this was the first time i realized that like oh maybe i should put like a dark color underneath my my colors um so there's not like little itty bitty white lines um in there you know uh actually i did you can see them you can see the like i don't know if you can on here but like here for instance there's like little itty bitty white lines uh because there's nothing behind that and when you fill with a paint bucket it's like sometimes the anti-alias gets caught and you don't it doesn't feel all the way underneath the line so yeah um another thing is that i didn't want this book because there is so much self-reflection in here i didn't want this book to have a ton of text in it um like like walls and walls of text and then like oh yeah by the way it's an art book you know so a lot of the story a lot of the the 
everything that's going on behind the scenes is told in captions. And I'm very proud of, you know, how that turned out because it, it gives, frees me up some space to be able to like make pictures as big as possible. And then I can make the caption text like as small as possible. And I'm very happy with how that turned out because, um, I thought the caption text is going to be too small, but turns out it's the perfect size. It's like actually, is actually a more normal reading size than the body text. So that's fun. Um, the next section. Oh, and if you guys like ever have any questions or anything too, you could let me know. Um, just put them in the chat and I'll get to them whenever I can. Uh, all right. So I believe every chapter has a section like this. But um, next section is the key player section, and that's just when I go over um, specific characters that were introduced in that chapter or that this is the chapter pertaining to. So because this is the first chapter, six, chapter six is the first one in this book, I, of course, I had to do a spotlight on um, Asadi, Sammy, and Kiba because obviously they've been in other chapters, but this is, you know, I just want to run down where they were at this point in time. So... This is like, <laughs> this looks so good. Oh my God. I'm sorry, I keep saying that, but it, it, it just, it's so odd seeing it on a computer and then seeing it um, like actually printed and stuff. It, it's fulfilling, it's gratifying. But yeah, so then you have that and you have, how long has this been going on so far? Uh, hold on, let me see. I, I don't know how long I've been streaming. Uh, oh, 30 minutes. Okay, that's that's pretty uh, substantial. I'm surprised it's been 30 minutes, though. Wow. All right. And then you have, like, Cohen and Kiba section. Um, Cohen was introduced in Chapter 6. So this is where the, the key player section really gets to shine because it's actually introducing someone. Um, and then there's other characters who are, like, they appear in specific chapters, but they don't get a spotlight until later on. Like Phoebe, for instance, is one of those characters where she appears in chapter eleven for the first time, but she doesn't um she doesn't get a spotlight until chapter twelve, so I just want to introduce her in the key player section. So then I think after that is the last section. Yeah, okay. So after the key player section is the thumbs and, <laughs> thumbs and junk, I call it, or sometimes it's just called thumbnails if there's not like the end junk portion of it, because um, thumbs and junk is just like um, like thumbnails, but then also other artwork that I just didn't get to put in at any other point during this chapter part. Um, so you got your thumbnails here. These are definitely the rougher of my thumbnails. Um, just because, like, this is so early on. This is, oh, that's one thing I really, really, really love and, and, and like to, um, and just kind of like to ruminate on in terms of the sketchbook is that, or in terms of this art book, is that it's not, like, it is not a straight shot art book. And, and what I mean by that is, like, it's not just, oh, this is a collection of a person's art. This is art from 2015. So there is a timeline of how my art improves throughout the book. And I'm I'm very glad that I managed to get that. Um, I mean, by the nature of what it is, going through all the other chapters, it was going to happen anyway. But, like, I'm glad that I have a book like that because I think that's, um, and if you guys have any ex other examples, um, obviously there's there's some out there, but if you have any examples off the top of your head, please let me know. But I think it's, you know, relatively rare for you to see a progression of someone's artwork in, you know, a, a, an art book, as opposed to just like a collection of their artwork. Again, if you guys have books that show that off, please, please send it to me. I'm a sucker for that. Um, also, for whatever reason, my chats are like lagging a bit but yes Makuhita <laughs> Kohen is a Kohen is a chonk he's for sure a chonk um hopefully there's nothing else that's been lagging but let me see oh yeah so here here is the the in junk section so it's just <laughs> like these are really old character sheets that I made and like no I don't know why Asadi is finger gunning I like I cannot for the life of me there are some things in this book that I specifically recall like in chapter 
eight, I was working on something while listening to Third Mario Brothers play Sonic 06 Blind. And, like there's specific things that I remember. I do not remember why Sadie's finger gunning. That is that is beyond me. It's gone. <laughs> um. So, but yeah, this it, this is the end junk part of the sketchbook or of the section. So, the next one. I may or may not, you know, okay, I'll share this on stream. This is a, 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 a fun thing for me. But, um, the colors in this look so good. Okay, um, this is the first reflection section. And this is what all the reflection sections look like. They're not all, like, red. There's different colors. But this is the first reflection section. And this is what I mean by, like, it telling little stories that, I couldn't really fit in anywhere else. Like, I, I didn't want to bloat Cohen's, like, key player section with stuff like this. Um, and the gist of this one is that at some point in time, I found myself thinking, why a Makuhita? Like, I, I had never once considered Makuhita ever in my roster of Pokemon <laughs> to have, you know? It's like, why? Why a Makuhita? And I realized that in 2014... Um, when I played the demo of Oris, there was this conversation between, uh, I almost called him Toby. What is it? Tabitha. Tabitha and Matt. And it, it, Matt calls him a little Makuhita man. And that just solidified in my soul that I needed a Makuhita, a grumpy little Makuhita with red eyes. I, it just, and that's how Kohen was born. It's so weird, right? It's just such a, a random thing. But I'm, I'm. I remembered that one day and I was like, oh my god, because I was looking at, um, I was looking at my Tumblr and I have to say Tumblr really came through with this book. A lot of my life, specifically in 2015, I do not remember, um, just because of the nature of like what was going on at the time. And I guess that's a good point or a good time for me to point out too that like a lot of the stuff in here, it's, you know, it's, it's fun, it's leftover things, but there, there is... Um, there are a lot of personal accounts in here, and it's not anything personal that I wouldn't be comfortable sharing. Um, but it, there's a lot of personal stuff in here that goes into why certain things happened in Leftovers. Um, whether they're, like, explicit or implicit, um, as far as, like, the connection goes. So, <laughs> Tumblr was really good for that, because I didn't remember a lot of 2015, and I, I went back and I was like, oh, that's when that happened? That, what? <laughs> so... Yeah, um, Cohen is based off of a fun translation. That that is that's where he came from, because uh, <laughs> they were they were kind of going off in the Oris, uh, just Oris as a whole. Like not even just the demo. They were kind of going off on the translations there. Let me see. Uh, let me see. And then we have six point five. So I have a couple sections that are like. In between sections I'm not gonna go through the whole book like I'm probably gonna wrap this up after this part if nobody has any other questions um but there's a couple chapters that are in between chapters and I was like I don't want to give them their whole I don't want to give them like a whole you know title page because it's it's you have to pay for the pages you know what I mean and I already had I was already pushing a lot um did I mention this is 160 pages like <laughs> This is this is a, a, a relatively thick book. Um more than you would expect something like this to be, I feel like. But <laughs> yeah, a throwaway line. Created best boy. Can you believe it? Oh, <laughs> uh, and he's just been becoming bester and bester boy ever since then. <laughs> um he was also uh what I mentioned I mentioned in the reflection section is that he also had the personality of Tabitha a little bit in chapter six. Just the way, like his disposition where he's just kind of very specifically kind of grumpy and, and, and edgy. <laughs> um, but he's developed more into his own character as time goes on. But if you go back and read that, you can probably see that that's where that came from. Um, especially compared to like, uh, specifically remake Tabitha. Cause regular Tabitha, I don't remember much. <laughs> don't remember much at all um but yeah so these are the in-between chapters so it's got the Dan danny interlude and then there's also the um 
the Steven interlude. Um, and I was thinking, do you guys want me to do like a flip, like a full flip through? Should I do like a full flip through? Just like very quickly. I mean, it's not like you can read anything. Uh, and that's where I think most of the, the substance come from. But if you want me to do like a full flip through, let me know. Or I might do it anyway. But, <laughs> but yeah. Um, so the in, in between chapters have like a little half cover page and then you go into like development. It's very much a more condensed version of the um, regular chapters. Again, I gotta get these pages thicker because they are hard to turn. Um, and they're not like paper thin. Okay, that's okay. Let me actually let's just go over some technicals with the, the the book itself, like how it's printed and everything. Because so far, I am very happy. It, aside from like the the small hiccup in the beginning where it was like uh, this page is ripped. Uh, I don't know if you can see it, but besides the beginning where it's like that page is ripped, the colors are spot on. They look like they did on the computer, which is wild to me because it's like the co like the colors are so good in this. Um, the obviously the, the the text, everything is super crisp. Uh, everything is super clear, and it, it's obviously not going to be super clear on my webcam because my webcam kind of looks like a potato sometimes. I'm not gonna lie. Um, but but yeah, I definitely recommend Mixum if you're going to if you want to put a book together. Um, actually, while I'm at it, let me see. It's gonna be like it's gonna be like weird <laughs> with me doing. Uh... Actually, you know what? I'll do it with the. Hold on, I will do it with the leftovers stream overlay. show my address before I switch to this pre uh, feature. But there's another feature where it is the preview feature. Let me go ahead and let it load real quick. But yeah, the website is Mixum, which is M-I-X-A-M dot com um, or dot co if you're in the UK. Uh, <laughs> and it is loading this preview. Here we go. Okay. Let me go back to the art stream. that I do recommend mix them if you want to like print books um and uh, the cool thing is that I got it like it's hardcover and hardcover usually runs you it, like specifically with the the other project that I was um helping work on I we had to look into um hardcover because we wanted to you know upgrade the the quality of the book and make it um where is my chat chat a tat tat here it is um oh latrell thanks for popping by <laughs> have a good night um i'm probably gonna be heading out here soon too but i'll i'll, I'll do a flip through like a quick flip through but um but yeah so hardcover books are usually 
really, really hard to, to get printed in bulk because you have to have a lot of money for it. They're, they're really expensive. And I can safely say that, that this was, this whole box, like this is, um, hold on, let me see if I can. It's a heavy boy. Okay. This is the box I got. Um, there's 13 copies in here and these 13 copies costed me $324, um, $345 with shipping. And that's like, like I said, that's $25 per book, which is nothing when it comes to printing, um, printing hardcover. Usually, like, usually they run you up in, in you know, into the thousands once you hit over like 10. So... I'm very happy with the, um, I'm very happy with the, the quality of the product, the price of the product, and, yeah, the, the, the shipping and stuff, even though I, you know, I messaged them and I was like, hey, what's going on? It still wasn't, like, they kept in constant contact with me, um, like, hey, you know, we just wanted to let you know that this is off. They went through and checked the book. They, they, they proofed the book, you know? Uh, even though I proofed the book too, it's not just like, oh, you send it in, we'll print it as is. They went through and they proofed the book and they were like, hey, we just want to let you know, like, your spine is off. Um, speaking of spines, look at that. It has an actual spine. It's a real book. We're a real book, guys. <laughs> um, and it just, it just says, four years in Island Girl, leftovers, four years in Island Girl. A reflective art book on the Duford arc and then it's got Picara. so I um yeah it's gonna actually stick out on my shelf which is great this is like a real book <laughs> um so yeah I definitely recommend mix them if you want to get books printed specifically hardcover is the only one I can speak for um but and I, I almost am hesitant to say this I feel like if they could print a hardcover really good for really cheap they can print anything <laughs> so yeah and and good quality like this is a solid hardcover it's not like medium medium cover <laughs> no it's a solid hardcover um this is going on the bookshelf so or as i like to say i like to call their coffee table books yeah <laughs> um <laughs> it is so fancy and official i'm very excited about that um all right the last thing i'm gonna do because i am starting i'm starting to, to sweat it's kind of hot today um is I'm just gonna do like a quick flip through and hopefully here we go hopefully you guys can get like a preview so if you don't want to see the book and you just want to wait to get your own copy whether that be digital or physical because they are going to be going up for sale beginning of June I want to say June 1st I'm, I'm aiming for June 1st because that's when leftovers comes back um it's going to be 25 25 to 30 I'll, I'll say 25 to 30 because I still have to price out like shipping and stuff like that but around there for a physical copy and then 15 for like the digital copy to help me like recoup um shipping prices for the, the hardcover ones so and plus I like I, I have the other pdf books free um namely because I'm like oh yeah I just want to like give out free inspiration if people you know want to look at it I know I like looking at art books I like looking at sketchbooks um and so I want to make that more accessible. But I worked so hard on this that I'm like, okay, I got to, like, at least, you know, get a little bit um, specifically, like I said, to help with shipping prices. So, yeah. I'm going to do go ahead and do a little flip through. And, yeah, then I'll end the stream. So, we're here at the Dandy Interlude. I'll do it, like, I'll try to make sure I can get you guys oh god this is gonna be so hard to turn Ugh. how do i do this it's so hard to turn the pages okay Ugh. it might it might be easier if i like no okay this is not bad so thumbnails all right and you've got set sail the uh, sea fest development development on this chapter chapter seven is a doozy because chapter seven is like 15 different styles in it so <laughs> it, it there's a lot going on in chapter seven um where are you page burn more development me learning how to draw rocks <laughs> and then like signs and stuff for duford more development um more signs and then i had a um I, I got a graphic design job around this time, a student graphic design job, so I was, like, feeling myself as far as, like, starting to do graphic design work, so I was like, oh, yeah, I can do this, and, um, 
this was peak immersion for me because at this point in time it was like oh yeah i'm making a pokemon story but i when i made this it was like what is it how would you advertise how would people in the pokemon world be advertised to so i had to like immerse myself in on Dufort island um during the festival in order to make that so that was like the start of me getting really really good at world building um more development this is chapter seven Really long, really long development stuff. This was the, the chapter that had the, the longest section, I think. Um, I'm pretty sure. I think this is more development? Yep, more development stuff. <laughs> oh, man. These colors look so good. Oh, focus. Focus. My webcam is out of focus. Come on. I'm back here now. Hopefully it'll get back into focus while I'm doing flipping the pages. Maybe? There we go. Alright. More thumbnails. I never know which way to, to, to push it. It's over here. Um, more thumbnails. And then we're still in chapter 7. Um... Where is this? Is this another page? Yes, it is. Oh, right, right, right. Okay, so this chapter had two. This chapter had two reflections. So you got the art style roulette, where it goes into each art style, what I was being inspired by, and just a little bit about like what made the art style, specifically the art style. And then you have <laughs> a really cool section on, um, and I actually put up a sketch dump on. Hold on, let me to my thing real quick um i actually put up a sketch dump on deviantart <laughs> i could not remember the website name i actually put up a sketch up on deviantart that was talking about how i redesigned the characters for chapter seven because it was just a it was a long already um a tedious process and it was done for my senior year first semester thesis um where i got to like work with leftovers because I didn't realize that for a thesis you could like make up your own project, so that was fun. Um, consequently, <laughs> or subsequently, the chapter itself took a really long time to come out. Like there was months between pages because I, I had to work for school. Um, but I think, and, and that's also why the, the style changes so much. It was just me working, uh, working on schoolwork and like learning and stuff like that, and then like. Three months later, a page would come out, and it's like completely different looking. Um, let's see. So this section is character design stuff for redesign stuff, and then we had like a senior thesis uh, gallery, and I actually ended up making figurines of the main cast and actually do I want to should I just go ahead and show you guys the figurines I still have them let me you know what let me just go ahead and do it I'll be right back <laughs> ignore my coat rat in the back <laughs> Okay, so yeah, I still have these guys, um, and I put a picture of them in the book in lieu of a, like, official lineup, because I figured it was just the same artwork that I was showing anyway, so I might as well, hopefully, you can, oh, her ponytail fell off, but hopefully it focuses on her, maybe? Do I need to put the book back up again? I probably need to put the book back up again to get it to focus. This webcam is hard to deal with sometimes. I wish I could turn, I could probably actually turn off the auto focusing feature, but I didn't, I don't know how, and I didn't figure it out for the stream. There we go. All right. Can I? Can I, can I just keep you here and then show the figures off? <laughs> Hopefully. Um, okay, so this is Asadi. She is, I think I specifically made her to be the size of like a Barbie. So I think she's 12 inches. 
Um, so that's her. And all of them are to scale. So you can see, I can't hold them all up, but you can see here that they're all to scale. And I made these in 2016. So the next in line is Cohen, and this is like his his new af right after re uh, redesign design. He looks far different now. Um, mainly he's mainly shaped up a bit. He's not so lord, <laughs> so wide, thick boy. Uh, there's Sammy. He's the next in line as far as like size goes, height. And then my favorite of the group is Kiba because I think she just turned out so well and I, I caught her personality so well. Also she has like, cause she's, just, you know, Poochyanna or hyenas. So I gave her spots at first when I redesigned her. Um, they're, they're gone now, but she also has little paws. I don't know if you can see them, but yeah, I really like the way Kiba's figure turned out. Um, let me see. So yeah, that's these guys. Let me move them because I don't know if you saw, but there there's a lot of like cracks and stuff in them. That's because they're old. <laughs> um, I originally I had made these guys, and I explained that in here too. But I made these guys, oops, because in the gallery I was like, okay, you know, you see the redesigns, you see the the sketches. I want there to be like a sense of tangibility because I'm designing the characters so they feel alive. But I want you to be able to like feel them yourself. So I have them up there for people to like, you know. Just turn, toss and turn and stuff like that and just look look at. Um, so yeah. Uh, again, go this way. There we go. Alright. Crude Awakening. And this is, this is also, this is where like stuff starts getting long because a lot of stuff starts happening in life. Development. Was it too, too much? Uh, development art still left for chapter 8 after what happened um, that you'll learn about later on. <laughs> More development. Okay, this is a, a, a nice story about like a beta version of chapter 8's chapter that I found. Uh, the script that I found and it was like completely different. <laughs> like originally, um, originally Asadi was just so taken taken aback and so just taken over by how chapter seven ended with like everything was cool and like the beaches were opening back up and she just completely forgot to go to the gym and ended up in Slayport. So it's, it's it was like really <laughs> really Asadi um really Deja you wrote that <laughs> um but yeah thankfully things didn't go that route um because yeah it, it was Back when Leftovers started, I was more concerned about following the game story. Um, it was closer, like, following closer to the game. So it was like, oh, yeah, next step is, is Slateport. Um, and I don't know why I had her skip the gym, but that's what happened. Thankfully, that's not what happens in the story. So this was the page I was I was saying, and I, was, I worked on this while watching, um, or I guess listening, not really watching, uh, to a Sonic 06 blind playthrough. So that was fun. Um, <laughs> but yeah, so that's the process. And you can see how, each, like I said, each chapter has the same sections. Uh, Trainer Troop! The Trainer Troop has a really sentimental story behind it that I will save for the book. Uh, and then, each section of the Trainer Troop, uh, each person gets their own section because this is where they're introduced. I'll like, go through these really quickly. And then Hina, because Hina got, uh, Hina was not introduced in this chapter, but she was, she, she made a stronger appearance in this chapter. And you got thumbnails when it, uh, starts, I start going, like, digital with my thumbnails, so they're not a hot mess like they were in chapter six. And then we got some other artwork. The end junk section of Thumbs and Junk. And then, okay, so I don't know if you remember that comment that I made about, like, there's not very much concept artwork left af uh, for Chapter 8 after what happened. So I did a bunch. Uh, when I, fir I first, I got a job um, out of college, a graphic design job, and it was great. I was, like, doing a lot of things, and it really inspired a lot of, like, 
art uh, art creation and everything and I for the month of October to like January I made so much concept art and so much everything for for chapter uh, eight and I had it all on the flash drive um considering this is called the storm of 2018 you can probably figure out where this is going so I had my flash drive plugged into my iMac I had an iMac at the time and we had like a really big flash storm um and it was just like electricity was like boop it, it flickered off for like five seconds five seconds and it wiped everything on my drive the only things I have left are some um PNGs of character sheets that I made and hazy Instagram photos from this is why it's so important for me to document stuff because this is all I have left of these I don't have these anymore and it's like important things it's like uniforms and stuff and and then a, a cursed picture of Kiba who's not not a shiny but then I have um I have like these two like I when I say I was going hard on concept art I was going hard on concept art I had just a whole series of turnarounds um yeah. Then, one thing, thankfully, that I had transferred over, um, I had it on my work computer. I had, between my work computer and my home computer, I had transferred over the work that I did on Leftovers' new logo. This was the, this, this was the original logo, uh, up to this point, up to 2018. And I did, like, a complete rebrand, because part of the job that I got was, it was graphic design, and I had to make a lot of logos. So I was like, oh, what if I, like, make logos for myself now? <laughs> so this just goes into the creation of that. Then this is the Steven interlude that I was talking about. Uh, this is when the pages get hard to turn again. Uh-oh. There we go. Alright. Key players, thumbnails. And then this is this goes into my um me making my director's cuts and covers, I believe. Okay. We're on page 87. Uh, maybe I maybe I won't do a full go through because it, it is like there's 160 pages in this bad boy. Um, we're halfway through the book. So yeah, so there's that. And then, you know what? I think I'll get to the next chapter and then I'll, I'll stop because that'll be half the book. Just a reflection on there. Yeah, there we go. We're at the next. We're at the next chapter. A perfect, a perfect place to stop too. If you know uh, what happens at the end of this chapter. So yeah, that that is the book. I'm going to definitely sit on the couch tonight and look through everything, look through all the copies to make sure like the bulk printing is good. Um, just because you know this first copy. It's, it's great and you never know maybe they put the better copy on top but considering it's had a, a rip page in it maybe not but like i want to go through look through everything make sure everything's all right and um yeah i'm i'm very happy with these i'm very proud of these uh and i wanted to thank you for sticking with me how long has it been it's been an hour i've been i've been going over this book i've been uh, you know just falling in love with this book um I wanted to thank you guys for sticking with me, the people that are still here. And there's not really much else for me to say. Um, keep an eye out if you are tuned in to where to find me, stuff like that. DeviantArt um, is is Pacara, P C A A R A, which is in the title of the stream. Um, if you know me on Facebook, stuff like that. But keep an eye out for when the books go on sale um, for pre-order, essentially, because I, they have to ship to me and then I have to ship them out. So it's time between that. But um, but yeah, and I will definitely keep you guys posted on, on all of that. And yes, um, Bella, you, this is your first time, I believe, in the stream. So thank you for showing up. Um, thanks for, you know, just popping in. Uh, everybody, thanks for participating in the chat, if you participate in the chat. And, yeah, this is going to be <laughs> Deja Noodles, Flash Bacara. <laughs>
slash Pokeball26 if you follow my URL. <laughs> Signing out.